Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. And um, thanks for hanging through with a uh, nice afternoon of talks. I'm going to give an update about the Baltimore Ecosystem Study. Um, we are in a phase of synthesis um, for the BES LTER project. Our current grant um, that is our ramp down project is um, mainly focused on synthesis of our long term studies. Um, we can continue to collect a little bit of data um, on stream chemistry, um, but mostly what we are doing right now is focused on doing a synthesis of the 20 years of the Baltimore Ecosystem Study LTER. We have many dimensions of synthesis that, um, you know, I'm sure you'll see papers coming out on all different things listed here and many others. Um, and I'm not, I don't, don't have time to go through all the synthesis products that we're developing right now, but um, I do want to highlight a few. So this talk is to highlight some synthesis activities we're doing. The first one is that our LTER um, synthesis book came out in 2019, published by Yale Press. This is a picture of the cover here. Um, please check it out. This has got lots of information about the Baltimore Ecosystem Study. So it's our um, LTER contribution to the LTER book series. Um, in addition, we had a paper just recently come out in bioscience on the theoretical perspectives of the Baltimore Ecosystem Study over the 20 years. Um, and we go through in that paper all of the theoretical developments that occurred in the Baltimore Ecosystem Study, the lessons that we learned, and how it advanced um, our understanding of urban ecosystems in general. So I, I recommend you check out this paper that was led by Stuart Pickett and basically the whole, whole Baltimore team. So I want to thank all the co-authors on, on that paper. Um, it's, it, this represents the Baltimore uh, PI team. Um, what I want to focus on for the rest of this short little talk is, is what we are doing right now with a team of postdocs. So we are all, um, you know, there's many PIs in the Baltimore Ecosystem Study and people are doing synthesis in their own research domains, you know, doing synthesis of birds or biogeochemistry and various things. Um, but we also have a team of postdocs that um, we have brought together to do synthesis of the socio-ecological data that we've collected over these years. And, and this socio-ecological synthesis is, is led by um, Elsa Anderson, Megan Fork, Lawrence Lynn, Dexter Locke, and Amanda Succi. They're all postdocs distributed um, at various um, universities in various disciplines. So we've got biogeochemists, hydrologists, uh, social scientists, all working together. And they're trying to take our 20 years of data and come up with very new things, um, and which is really exciting to bring postdocs together because then they can, they can look at things with a fresh eye. And one of the things they're really interested in doing is to try and merge um, our, our measurements and um, assessments of uh, the perceptions of environmental quality that we have been asking people about for 20 years. We've been doing telephone surveys in Baltimore of people and we ask them, is the environment improving in your neighborhood? or going down. Um, we asked them a series of a lot of questions about do you go out and walk in the forest? Do you uh, kayak? Do you, you know, what kind of things do you do? Um, and, and, and are you willing to pay, for example, for environmental improvements or volunteer? There's a whole series of questions. And the postdocs are interested in trying to understand the relationships between perception, human perception of environmental quality, and the measures of environmental quality that are sort of the hallmark of LTER sites. So how do people perceive the environment um, relative to how we measure it? And so here, here are some of the questions that they're, they're interested in, in looking at. So for example, what spatial scales do these occur? Um, are, they, are people queuing in more to the aquatic or terrestrial environments? Um, and then how are these predictors influencing um, perceived environmental quality changing over these 20 years that we've been studying Baltimore? Um, we have a rich, a uh, series of data on this. We have many, 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 many thousands of surveys we've conducted, um, which is uh, the, the dots on this map. This is a map made by the postdoc team. Um, Baltimore City is in purple. Most of our data is in Baltimore City, um, but we have data throughout Baltimore City and the neighboring counties. Um, and they've been adding, the postdoc team has been adding to the LTER data by using um, a bunch of data that are also available. So the stream survey, for example, and cities, street trees, and USGS gauging stations beyond the BES to try and explore these interactions between human perceptions of change um, and measures of environmental change in Baltimore. 
Um, so we've got a rich data set to do this. Um, and this is the conceptual framework that they're using to guide their research or our research that led by the post. Um, there have basically we have data in three different domains. Um, we study terrestrial diversity and structure, um, a whole bunch of aspects of the terrestrial ecosystem. We study the social domain and then um, ecosystem processes in hydrology, biology, chemistry. And they're trying to understand what the links are between um, these three domains and how does that change over time. So I'd like you to stay tuned because I think this team, they've only just started in February and they're already making great strides and trying to, to link how people perceive their environment and how we measure it as ecosystem uh, and uh, community ecologists in our LTER. So with that, I'm happy to take questions after Dan's talk.